This episode of Convert to Rate is brought to you in part by HelloFresh. Get $30 off your first week of deliveries by using the offer code RAID30 at HelloFresh.com. Welcome home, Raiders. Tonight, we're back from BlizzCon, and I'm kind of a little bit blue about it, but that's okay, because the gang is all here. So let's get to it as Convert to Raid presents the Battle.net News! Ah, hello everybody. Welcome back. And from the Battle.net News broadcast bunker in Minneapolis, Minnesota, today is November 14th, 2017. It's after Biz BlizzCon. Yep. And it's now 10, 12 in the PM. Uh, thank you so much for joining us from all around the Blizzard universe. And hello, my name is Pat Crane. I am your host of this Ding Dang Show. And we have a full panel tonight, so let's get to them. From uh, Lagging Balls. Uh, it is this. Welcome, this. Hi. Hi. Thank you for uh, announcing me first for once. Well, you know. Appreciate that. I got. I got. I got to change it up from time to time. It's I've true. never been first. It's true. For the record. I've oh, never boy. been first. Oh boy. All right. Well, he will be second because he uh, because he spoke up from uh, Well Met and the Payload and other such podcasts. It's John Horseman. Hey, John. Due to popular demand and a sense of progression in this podcast we will be instilling microtransactions into the rest of this show so right. for only 80 dollars or listen to pat's ad at the front of the show for 40 hours yeah you can finish the rest of this show that's right that is that is totally true yep <laughs> i don't know how to what to say other than uh from lords of the storm the podcast about heroes of the storm it's gizmo oh i uh Con crud. Oh, yeah, really? Con crud is a thing. I've been, it's weird. I've been like fighting it off. It's coming in waves to where I'll wake up, have a sore throat, have a cough all day. Yeah. Fight it off, goes away, it comes back. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, anybody else have the con crud? Anybody else? Nope. I totally missed it this year. I you can't do? believe it. I totally missed it, which uh, I think actually uh, I need a, there it is. A big round of applause. First year ever that i've missed out on the con crud even the year i even the year i didn't go i got con crud <laughs> weirdest thing weirdest thing ever I'm uh sorry, guys. so uh welcome back from anaheim everybody and it's weird seeing you uh not in person i'm kind of I'm, yeah i'm kind of sad about it a little bit a little bit that you yeah. get great know. hugs oh yeah thanks buddy you know that everybody thanks, was buddy. saying so and it was so great seeing everybody uh, from all over the place, from the guild, from uh, from other podcasters and influencers and, and streamers and and the devs and the other people that work at Blizzard and uh, all of the people. It was so great to see everybody. And I met so many cool people uh, and got to hang out with uh, with you three folks. I'll just <laughs> I'll just call you folks uh, and a, a bunch of other folks. And it, it was just amazing amazing time can't say enough about blizzcon and uh what was it i was watching the converted which is our uh the convert to raid guild has a podcast and it's called the converted and uh bartholomew is one of the guys on there and he was it was his first blizzcon and he okay. said and he said you know what i think everybody undersold it to me because it was just so much more than he could ever hope for oh i know I know that feeling. It's cool. And he was a wild man at at, uh, at the con. So. Oh, yes. It was yeah. good to meet him. He was all over the place. He was the party. And maybe and maybe a little tipsy. Might have been. A lot a of little. people were. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was so, weird. That's what happens when there's a bar every like 50 feet. Right? Yeah. So. Uh, so, guys, I just kind of want to catch up with you guys. So, um, 
I just kind of want to find out how your BlizzCon was, what you guys were doing, what the big things you were doing. Uh, I, John, I didn't get to hang out with you as much as I had previous years or the other year, I guess, that we were hanging out. Yeah. Um, but what were you what were you up to this year? What was what was your big oh, thing? I I got just really lucky, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, I, one of the shows I do the weekly intake, it's a salty podcast with myself and Trevor may, uh, I got to hang out with Trevor a bunch and he had some VIP tickets to, uh, the, the, um, overwatch skybox in the, in the over like that glass oh, wow. in thing. Yeah. Yeah. And open bar food. So I hung out there most of every day. Well, and then um, we lucked in and we actually went to like the discord party and the Twitch party with Tim, the tap man. Oh, cool. Which, yeah, it was really cool. He was a really cool guy. We went to umami burger. Oh yeah. That's a good place. I like oh that my place. God. It was so good. They actually, so they actually have a burger there. It's called the incredible burger and fist. You would like this because it's t made totally out of plants. Oh, excellent. But it tastes like a burger. It tastes like a real burger. And it bleeds stuff, like right? a real burger. Yeah, like beet juice? I, yeah. Yes. Because yes. it's a real burger. So no. yeah. it's not beet juice. Yeah. Yeah. They, were, they were trying to tell us about it, but I was just, I just wanted the meat. Right. Uh, sure. So, I mean, why not? Yeah. And they, um, yeah. So we, we went there. By the way, the only downside of the Incredible Burger is it breaks apart kind of easily. Yeah. Right. Uh, yep. Besides that, everything was really great. So like my nights just kind of like, got really really weird like it was just they they were like nights i've never had before and i didn't know where we were going i had i didn't have any plans and we just kind of like went with the flow whoever texted us first that's where we went but besides that i got to watch a ton of overwatch a ton of hearthstone um it, it, it was my my second favorite blizzcon i would say Last year was my first favorite. This year, second. And then my first year was the third. So, you know, not bad. Yeah. Upper 66%. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, not bad. That's nice. Yeah. I uh, missed, honestly, out of everything, Pat, yeah. I missed hanging out with like the CTR crew the best. Like that was the one well, thing where I was like, oh, that kind of sucked. We got to hang out a little bit, but we didn't get to hang out as much as I would. I, I like you. And so if we would have <laughs> hung out more, that would have been great by me. <laughs> but I was, but I'll you know, be, I'll be in Minnesota soon. My brother got engaged Ooh, today. So nice. Go. Congratulations to your brother. Congratulate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, Gizmo, what about you? Because uh, I was, you were kind of running around crazy a little bit. I was. What were um, you doing? It was a weird, the year or the BlizzCon felt weird this year, not in a bad way. Um, okay. So this was my second year covering kind of his media. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I got a lot more done. And I was less stressed, but I was busier to whereas last year, I feel like I got more done, but I was super stressed and just running around all over the place. Um, but I think part of that was because they did uh, Heroes of the Storm, the HGC a lot different this year. They had their own stage. It was over on Saturday by like 530, mm -hmm. um, which was kind of sad, kind of nice because I didn't get to watch as much HGC this year from going to other Heroes panels and interviews, things like that. But... When it was over, I had time to kind of walk around, enjoy the show floor, uh, go watch closing ceremonies, which was amazing, and uh, just kind of hang out with people. So right. it was a busy day and a half or so, and then kind of got to relax, which was nice. But um, the CTR party this year was incredible. It was yeah. so good. It was, it was pretty sweet. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, there was no other real competition other than the Discord party, which was invite only, right? So, yeah. uh, and really far away. It was, yeah, really far away. Um, it was really far away. Was, we just got like the last two hours. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, but it was, but it was really cool. And there were so many people that came in to the CTR party and, and we were trying to like count how many people were coming in, but they were just so thankful that there was a place that there wasn't a DJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, tried we, really hard to get to DJs. DJ at that party, by the way, but yeah. Pat wouldn't let me. Right. So. <laughs> well, we estimate that there was probably about 3,000 people that went through there at one point oh, or yeah. another. Oh, it, it, was it was, oh, yeah. It was huge. Like, I hugged so many people off the chain. It was great. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, since then, uh, Gizmo has not changed his uh, CTR jer jersey at all. We got jerseys nope. this year for the, for the gang. They're but so I, cool. I shower in it, so it's okay. Oh, right? all right. At and least it's clean. It. Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. Um, but I also, I will <laughs> say like kind of, yeah. one of the cool things this year was finally getting to meet Coltrane, who was at CTR, oh, yeah, yeah. At CTR party. Yes. And I think, I don't remember if it was John or Sharku or Tadva that said this, but they said like, when you meet Coltrane, he is the nicest guy in the world. He makes it seem like a bigger deal that he's meeting you than you are him. Because right. I've, so I've known Coltrane. I've kind of talked to him. I finally saw him. I was like, Coltrane. He's like, oh, my gosh, it's Gizmo. I've never seen him in person. It's so nice to meet you. I was like, wait, no. I'm this, That's what I'm going to say to you. you. I started podcasting. You're one of the reasons I started podcasting. Uh, but no, he's a super yeah. easy guy to talk to. He, and I'm he glad is he made it always there. like the first guy with a compliment. <laughs> always like the first guy with a huge hug and a compliment and talking about you and about how awesome you are. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, it's disarming is what it is. I mean, it's yeah. really it's really just kind of one of those things that takes you back and you go, oh, Coltrane, you understand me so much. <laughs> he made me cry at the party. Oh, really? He, oh. he cornered me and oh. he knew who I was and he was complimenting me and. I just I had to tell him to stop. I was like, you have to stop. And I was just like, Ugh. right. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, you're exactly right, guys. He's mm -hmm. he's so great. And and uh, we talked for he, he was talking to everybody. So like he had like a, this group of like 20 people at all times. Yeah. Just kind of around him. <laughs> he had like an entourage just kind of following it was him like Chris Metzen. It was like an entourage, except for that it wasn't. It was just people kind of flowing in and out of this group. And and he was like, oh, hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? So, yeah. So it was just really cool to see him and, and uh, yeah, all that kind of good stuff. Um, now, Fist. Yes. Uh, what was the what was one of the highlights for you this year? I mean, <laughs> we got we got to hang out a little bit more than uh, the, the rest of the troop because uh, we were kind of we had the media passes together and so we were kind of going over some strategy stuff well not really yeah. but no it's just cuz we're best <laughs> friends Pat. that's sure. that's you don't have to you don't have to mask this into something that it isn't okay <laughs> now we're besties it's totally cool exactly yeah yep. i spent most of my time with you yeah. and i got to learn about you and watch you consume an entire bag of jolly ranchers uh over the course of a couple of days come on it like wasn't like 2 days that was a huge bag <laughs> Every time I looked over, my throat over, was really like, sore. <laughs> my throat was really sore. That sure, really sure. You had coffee on your back at one point. Yes, I don't I know did. how that That's happened. True. Yes, I did. Um, that was at the uh, that was at the that was at the uh, Kickstarter breakfast that we had for folks and and um, the first day. Right, and I was wearing my day. I was wearing my fairly new Overwatch uh, long sleeve shirt that's white with you know gray sleeves and stuff and and. It must have been our waiter, like just dribbled coffee oh, right down my back. On the waiter. That's I'm great. not saying it's true. I'm just saying I know I didn't do it myself because it was like in the Are middle sure? of my back. It's do really not tough. Put, have you watched don't put that on Manuel? Coffee? Okay, that is Manuel was amazing. He was a great guy. He was. <laughs> I'm just saying he was. There he may was have been the something like a walk by something where he did, just didn't mm. notice something, or maybe it was somebody else. It wasn't me. Uh, right. I just took a picture of it. I don't know. But yeah, and then we uh, we stood in line for a really long time. <laughs> we were going to buy something. Yeah. And then we ended up buying practically nothing after yep. about half an hour. Yep. So we, that was fun. We went downstairs to the store and, and uh, uh, Fist bought a pin. And I was like, yes. well, you know, it's all right. We'll just it's like a, hang out I don't need anything. Hang out in line and talk. <laughs> it was fine. Yeah, it was we did. And uh, I was really, really cold at one point. <laughs> and you yeah. let me borrow this hideous sweater. Yes. Uh, it had all this gross stuff on Dude. it. So I had to turn it inside out. It was so great. So great. The so last we, sweater. So we went, yeah. So we went into uh, the mythic <laughs> stage on uh, Saturday and like they were prepping for extra nerd sweat with Muse coming up in like oh, a yeah. couple of hours. So they, they like chilled down the mythic stage, like by another 10 degrees or something like that. I mean, it was ridiculously cold. And, uh, Fist was shivering, like <laughs> uncontrollably. We're like right under the vent or whatever. And for it the was. AC. And I was first of all, at first I was kind of like laughing, and then I was like, "No, she's really cold." She was yeah, not, just laughing at me cool. for a while. It was not cool. And then, uh, and then I was like, "Oh, hey, in my bag I have a uh, long sleeve, like uh, the waffle shirt 
with a, the alliance thing on it and yeah. she became alliance for no. no she did she totally switched no. she totally switched factions oh, to no. alliance for oh, no. like a good hour yeah. you know that's not true. I turned it inside out and then I stuck a button over the little gross little logo thing. But so you're still Alliance. See. You're still Alliance. You wore it. You were wearing it. You wore true. it. Yeah, you yep. were wearing it. Yep. That's Traitor. not true. Alliance Traitor. sympathizer right here. In a way, you could <laughs> say that almost board. makes you more Alliance turning the shirt inside out. Yeah. Because it puts the logo puts it closer, to your, closer heart. to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Except that's not true right. at all. That's like, <laughs> right. that's. That's not science. That's that is uh, science. That, that is science. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, unbelievable. Shortly after that, I was still wearing it, uh -huh. and I ran into Ian again because it, yeah. it happened a few times at this point. And I was trying to play cool, you know, because he's horrid, I'm horrid. Uh, and then Pat comes over and he's like, "Look at the shirt she's wearing," and That's then like right. lifts up the button. <laughs> That's right. I did. Well, thanks. I did. Thank nice. you. It was really well great. played, Pat. It was really great. Good job. Thank yes. you. That wasn't as embarrassing as the best part of BlizzCon for me, which is. Uh, uh, I tried to sneak some snacks out of the media room for my hungry guildies who couldn't be in that area. And uh, I went in and I, I left them down the hall, went in, uh, you know, sort of casually walked up to the snacks, uh, figured people might just think I'm really hungry. So, you know, I had like a like a handful of soda, which isn't easy, you know, just sort of like and then uh, <laughs> some chips, some pretzels, uh, some cookies, some nuts, you know, just like a bunch of stuff. So I'm pretty encumbered at this point, and I'm thinking if I just like go out the side door, it'll be fine, right? Because nobody will see me. Like this is the perfect crime. Um, so I walk out, and I have this like fleeting thought because I'm usually thinking about these things. Wouldn't it be funny if I ran into Ian Hesikosis like this <laughs> very moment? Uh, so I walk out. There's nobody around, and I, I'm not wearing my contacts because I had an issue with them the day before, so right. I can't see anything far away. Right. And uh, somebody rounds the corner, uh, you know, tall. Uh, bowler shirt, black shoes, Apple Watch. It's it's Ian. Cool, cool. Yep. So I try to like shove them behind my back, <laughs> and uh, he's like, "You wouldn't be abusing your media pass privileges, would you?" I'm like, "No, I'm not trying to feed my guildies. That's ridiculous." And then, meanwhile, a a, like snacks fall on the floor. And, Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Luckily, some some fans came over and and grabbed him for a picture, and I hastily stubbed them in my backpack like nothing ever happened. So yeah. nice. Why did you yeah. put them in the backpack in the first place? Because I thought I was being sneaky. I'm oh, I'm not good at being sneaky. Apparently, no. there's there's your problem right there. Right, I agree. backpack immediately. Yeah. yeah, I mean, next time if there is a next time, uh, yeah. Right, so yeah, you might have been blacklisted at that point. Ian's been like, who knows? Get, those six dollars in sodas, we're never getting back. This <laughs> off the list, right? That's right. It's uh. But it's funny because that's the kind of stuff that happens at BlizzCon, you know, like the, the ridiculous, hilarious, wonderful, weird, quirky things always seem to happen every year. I almost I almost them, so. made Ben Brode run into a sign. That's true. Like almost. <laughs> it was so it was so close. I was like, so we were walking uh, from the new area from the North Hall into the uh, regular area. And I saw Ben just kind of like booking it uh, into the new area. Right. So we were kind of passing each other and there are a bunch of like vinyl signs, like floor signs just kind of like stood up and, and stuff. And and I just felt like I needed to say something because it's Ben Brode, because he is he is Hearthstone in a lot of ways. He's the face of Hearthstone. And, and so I was like, Ben, I love your stuff. <laughs> and he like turned around. And he was still moving forward, and he, he just inches, just inches away yeah. from colliding with one of those vinyl signs. And I, and I was like, "Damn it!" I I almost had it. <laughs> right. So you're trying to take out Ben Brode? Well, nice. Not really. No, not really. I just, I just wanted to say, "Hey, I love your work." You know, I knew he was booking somewhere, so I didn't want to like stop him or anything like that. Just say, "I love your stuff." That's it. That's all. Sure. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I am uh I am still catching up with Virtual Ticket. <laughs> yeah, me, me too. too. There is I've got two mm -hmm. panels I really need to see. The, I'm still um, catching up with that stuff. So I mean, we will have news about all the stuff that's coming up, but all the stuff that happened at BlizzCon, we're still kind of going through it because it was so busy. It was incredible. Yeah. And plus, yeah, not only do you have all of the virtual ticket, but you have all of the all of the dev interviews and stuff like that coming out from 
all of the community members. And, and I know Thist, uh, you were in one, uh, mm -hmm. I had the, the one panel that I was in. That was cool. Oh, that one by the panel? Way, by the way, uh, thanks again to uh, Scott and uh, Patrick over at the instance for letting me participate. Uh, and it was a ton of fun. It was great. You guys were awesome. amazing. Make sure to watch the instance panel on Virtual Ticket. You actually don't need to have purchased the, the Virtual Ticket. It's totally free. Just go to blizzcon.com, click on watch, and then probably click on World of Warcraft uh, just to make sure you can see what, what's happening. Um uh, it was to totally fun, uh, but I was super busy, so I, I, I'm catching up. Is there, is there like a good panel? What's your favorite panel or favorite dev interview that you've seen or interview, I guess? John, voice, I'll start with you. The voice, Overwatch voice actor panel was pretty amazing. So, um, yes. they brought in Johnny Cruz and Darren DePaul yep. and the voice actress for Anna, uh, mm -hmm. Widowmaker yep. and Farah and Doomfist and then Michael Chu, who's the lead over all the story and lore. Uh, the voice panel was amazing. Really funny. Brought, you, you'll laugh really hard. You'll cry. Darren DePaul. Darren DePaul is amazing. Um, like, oh man, when You're, he did, because he came out and introduced the Overwatch short. Yep. And I was like tearing up. It's so cool that voice actors, you know, identify with a project like Overwatch, like Darren does. Like, yeah. I mean, imagine your favorite actor, you know, coming out and tearing up on stage because of a role they got to play in the mo in, in a movie, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. really happen that often. And Darren's just like, you know, I'm. Basically, like I am Reinhardt, and Reinhardt is me, and like that was it was just so cool. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, and I love the candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say I can, I can kind of do it. I might, I might be able to do it now. I'm not sure though, but it was kind of candy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you're better than mine. Wow. Fair enough. I, Way to show me no, up, Pat. Sorry, cool. sorry, but it was, that but was it really was, cool. it was a ton of fun to to see him, and I know that. Um, Shark actually got an interview, a quick interview with him, and I uh, can't remember her first name. Her last name is Hollings, and she is the voice of Widowmaker, um, uh, but that's on the last show that we that I posted last week, um, just kind of as a BlizzCon wrap-up, Darren DePaul and and her, and it was just really uh, cool to see all those guys. It, it always is, though. Those Overwatch guys are insane. Totally. Yeah. I mean, in the best way. Right. Oh yeah. Uh, it's go ahead. Well, it's just pretty cool, like how the actors understand how important the characters are to the fans, and seeing them, you know, be joyful about it and play it up, and especially hang out with each other. Like if you follow any of these guys on Instagram, they are so active, and they're always hanging out with each other, taking photos with each other, dancing, uh, you know, doing fan service stuff. So, it, I, like, I really appreciate it. And I know everybody Zom else does too. Yeah. So. Zombra and Mercy are like, like yeah. super close. They have yeah. like a daily YouTube vlog. Yeah, together. I was I was gonna say I always see videos of those guys together. So yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, hey Gizmo, how about you? Uh, what was either a favorite panel or a favorite uh, interview since that you've seen come out? Uh, my absolute favorite, and it is incredible, and I definitely suggest everyone go watch it, is the Carbot Animations live drawing. Um, oh. It was so good. It's hilarious. I mean, he, you can tell he's super nervous about doing this in a huge crowd of people because there was a line to get in this place. And so he's trying to animate live. He's trying to answer questions while he's animating. So he falls behind on animating. Then he's like, oh, my gosh, guys, sorry. I, I, have, to, I have to keep drawing. But it, you'll you'll go from la or crying from laughing to like instantly crying mm -hmm. from just a super emotional story that uh, I don't want to spoil it, but just really shows the impact that community members can have on their their fan base. Uh, that really caught him off guard, and it's just a really beautiful moment, and it's a super cool panel uh, if you like Carbot animations. So definitely worth checking out. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Fist, how about you? 
Uh, well, there was the Wow What's Next panel, the Wow Q and A, and there's this really good one. Um, it's with Michelle and Alex, uh, featuring Ian Hascostis. Um, <laughs> in fact, I think all three of those feature Ian. So, uh, they do. They do. Yes, yeah, just uh, really I, great stuff about okay. World of Warcraft. Yep. No, there was a lot of cool stuff about World of Warcraft, and, and we'll probably dive into it over the next few weeks, and and as we get into like the 735 PTR and all that kind of stuff. I, I know that we're going to be talking about all of this stuff as it develops. Um, you know, classic servers coming soon, TM and all that, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm sure that it'll be uh, lots of stuff to talk about in the next, oh, couple few months. Yeah, for sure. Eh, maybe. By, <laughs> by the way, uh, one of my favorites was actually uh, from the converted um, it was my favorite interview by far of anybody that I've seen, whether it was a de developer or just a regular person. But the Converted, our our guild podcast, uh, they actually did an interview with Kaz, who won the costume contest. Uh, was a part of, is is a part of our guild. So congratulations, Kaz! Yeah! Had an incredible Hogger costume. It was so amazing. And like, it it just totally blew everybody away. Oh yeah, and it's, oh, so cool. The was, the detail on it, like the teeth. Yeah. yeah. Like she went up and like you know made it look like if you just go up to your dog and open their mouth, yeah. like with the yellowing towards the top and kind of some of the cracking and stuff. It looked looked absolutely incredible. Yeah. No, it was really really Love cool. Served win. Yes. So good. And so in this in this interview. They actually talk with her about and and uh, her husband uh, about kind of how they craft that stuff and about how they they do their thing. And I I I got lost in it. It was a really long interview, but it was like the best long interview because I just kind of get, found myself just kind of being like right in the screen with them. So it was it was really cool. So be looking for that one. Uh, I know that I've tweeted about it a bunch today. So. Uh, but that just came out last mm -hmm. night. So there. Um, let's see. I know we've got a bunch of other stuff to talk about probably before we actually get into the the news part of the news. Probably. <laughs> we'll get there, guys. Maybe next week. Maybe next uh, This week is we'll all Blizzard catch-up stuff, but yeah. Um, oh, hey, just one little piece of news for those guys that I know that we've got um, Antorus coming up, the raid schedule, and we'll talk about that in just a just a second. But uh, I just kind of want to let people know that a lot of the CTR teams, a lot of the CTR guild teams are actually recruiting right now. We've got, uh, I don't even know how many. It's dozens of raid teams over on over at uh, Airy Peak US. Alliance side. Ew. <laughs> and, Maybe uh, reconsider. And a lot of teams are recruiting right now. All, all different um, abilities and and, you know, we have normal teams, we have heroic teams, we have mythic teams. They're all recruiting over there. So uh, head over to ConvertToRaid.com, check it out. Check out all of our guild stuff over there uh, when you can. If you're looking for a new team, there we go. All right, I am going to go into the news now. We'll start it up right now. It's time for the news. And first up, uh, happy birthday to ICC and uh, Warlords of Draenor. I don't know. It's just, this is the time of year. Ever magical see those things, things happen. Yep, magical things happen. And also, Warlords of Draenor. <laughs> oh, come on. No, what is great? No, it was, it was, uh, it was cool. It was it cool. Was thing. While, while so, it lasted, while it was fresh. What is three and Wrath is nine? Yeah. Oh my gosh, Wrath is nine, nine years yeah. old. Nine. Nine that's, years old. That's when I started playing, yo. So... Look at that. And then uh, it's Wow's birthday in what, two weeks? Something, Something like, like that. that. Yeah. It's going to be 13 so, years old. I know. Get that 13% XP bonus, boys. <laughs> That's right. It's 13 uh, years of my life, guys. 13 of the best years. You were a vanilla player, right? Yes. 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 Wow, I didn't have to bring it up myself so now, for once. So now, <laughs> so now uh, how do you feel about, about classic servers? Just real quick. That's not something I can answer quickly, um, but I will say this. Uh, uh, no, I, I just, 
Are you gonna I, are you I, gonna are you gonna play on classic I, servers or not? I mean, I'll try it, but it's just I I don't like it it's when too when Blizz pain. has to to fold <laughs> to people, you know, demanding things. You know, like I'm glad that they did it on their own terms finally, and they obviously got everything sorted out, and they're not gonna release it until it's just right. But I feel like this is just a bunch of people who used to be very, very happy playing vanilla in their mom's basements uh, just want to feel that way again. And they blame Blizz for how they feel now in the present. So they're like, bring back vanilla or else I'll be really, really mad. Uh, and that's how I feel about it. But yeah. it'll be great. So, I mean, vanilla so, wow is hard. It's a hard right. game. And I right. hope that they don't change that. I hope that they don't either. I hope that they do it. You know, they release it pretty much as it was back in the day, not too many little updates or anything like that. Not, yeah. no transmog, no uh, mounted level twenty, no, nope. none of that. It's just, hey, yeah, you're, it's just a hard leveling game, right? It's just Let's, Baron's chat and uh, I don't know Chuck Norris. Jokes. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't mind going back to Baron's chat though. I had some, <laughs> some good times back there. Sure. Well, of course, <laughs> you had to look for Man Crick's wife, yeah. so. You know, Almost, uh, never found him. No, nope, nope, never did. <laughs> uh, okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about Antorus for a little bit. Fist, what is happening uh, with the raid schedule? We found out a little bit about that since BlizzCon, right? Yes. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, can I just okay? So here's the schedule. So it's coming out November 28th, normal and heroic. And mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. It's going to be great. This is perfect. It's at the end of the month. We'll have December to play to get used to it. People will be going on Christmas break. And we'll just, uh, I just, new raid content is the best content for me anyway. Uh, December 5th, Mythic and uh, LFR Wing 1 comes out. Mm -hmm. December 19th, LFR Wing 2 comes out. January 2nd, LFR Wing 3 comes out. And January 16th, LFR Wing 4 comes out. So, so it's like every other week we got a new wing. Yeah. And I, is that weird? Is that something that they're trying that's new? Because I know that in previous uh, releases they've had it. Was it? Did they have it every week before? I'm trying to remember all the different releases that they've had. And I'm sure that they've done this before, but I'm not sure. I, I stopped paying attention to LFR a really long time ago, but it's it seems right. Okay. I just, uh, right. I'm just really glad that, that they're rolling out normal and, and heroic first. So we can yeah. just get right into it. Sure. But then I, I always like the, uh, LFR when the new wings, uh, happen. Oh yeah. That first it's week is just total chaos, utter chaos. Nobody clears anything. You have, uh, 10 stacks when you walk in there and you're like, oh man, we still can't down it <laughs> Yep. because we don't understand it's, the mechanics at all. And nobody wants that's to where try. You find the real heroes in life, you know, like the <laughs> tanks and heels who stick it out. They're like, I need to figure this out. I'm going into normal with my friends. Like, right next week i need to be here and figure this out and you guys need to stay with me and then that's when it's only in, in like those release days do you see like actual people in lfr come together rather than just yelling at each other so I, i'm still not gonna do it though <laughs> godspeed to everybody else well you know i mean you do get you can get loot and you can get uh you can get some ap out of the deal so that's not absolutely that's not yeah, terrible it's worth doing if especially if you're not looking to do normal heroic definitely I, and you know for no other reason just to see the new content because these dungeons have been beautiful and the content has been incredible like yeah. legion raids have been just fantastic so i always i always love jumping into lfr that first week and just seeing how seeing where those pain points are for each boss <laughs> yeah oh uh, man uh <laughs> it'll be fun though it'll be it, i was watching a lot of videos this week and and about all the different bosses coming up, uh, fat bosses come out with the. Uh, I think, I think they're. I think they're done with all the all the different videos. I'm not sure. Already. Um, uh, well, I mean, it's still. It's like the, you know, hey, before it comes out, here are the things that we're. Here's how it looks right now on the on the PTR, and I think they've come out with all or most of them. Um, so it's been uh, kind of nice to watch watch through that stuff and and check it out. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's been good. Uh, also, other than Antorus raid schedule, we actually have a new raid. Not really a new raid, though, because it's an old raid uh, that might be uh, joining. We might be able to do as well. Yes. And it, it, and it's not ICC. <laughs> no, it's not. Unfortunately, no. It's it's Alduar. 
And uh, I'm actually really looking forward to this one because it's not a raid that I have done a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I've done it a lot playing almost 13 years of WoW, but it's not one of the ones that I've had in my repertoire, like, a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited. And that people still have a reverence for Old War, and it's going to be really exciting to see everybody come back to it and people experience it, uh, you know, for the first time kind of as at a difficult level just mm -hmm. like it was with with black temple so uh, i'm just i'm just hoping the the lockout situation for these time walking raids is uh is fixed now gizmo and john john actually you didn't you never actually raided old War, did you back I, back in I your playing did, days I, not not when it was live content no is this something that's interesting to you or no Ah, uh, no, uh, no. Right. But it's it's not it's it's not WoW's fault in the sense that I just don't have the the mental time or capacity for WoW right now. Okay, so it's just it's just it's a really difficult time to play an MMO and want to play other games. I know, uh, even though it's easier really? easier than ever in some ways. Uh, there's some ways where it's just like, there's just so many great games out right now. Rocket League's on my Switch, Pat. Dude! Like, oh. come on. Oh, so, Rocket League! I, I've, so there's great. Just World, a lot Championship. of things. World Championships were just the other week. It was ma amazing just watching people fly yeah. around. Oh there's my God. just was it? a lot of things oh, so right now, and I just really, I just haven't, like, found... Like my my regular group of people, I play uh, mm -hmm. PUBG with a regular group of people. That's I play awesome. Overwatch with a regular group of people, people I'm really close with. Mm -hmm. And you know, in WoW, if I had that, if there was just some people where I like, I know we're gonna be on every day this time. Boom, yep, I'd be there. Right. But until then, um, you know, I'm just gonna keep losing at PUBG, and <sighs> you know, <laughs> that. Winner, it's winner, chicken dinner. Guess who it's not? It's not John. Mm, no. Yeah. One in 100. Here's an extra line of code to celebrate your winning. Like, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Small change, yeah. Right. Now, Gizmo, uh, you're also kind of uh, semi-retired, right? Um. Or no? So here's here's oh, the thing. Oh, oh here's what? the thing. Oh, I think uh, I know where this is going. Uh, uh -oh. when, it, when it comes to old Duar, I, I didn't do it when it was content. Yeah. I've heard really good things about it. Yeah. I'm really excited. I, I want to go back and do time walking. Um, here's the other thing. I may have reopened or resubbed. I may have All been right. bitten by the wow bug again. Okay. And I may be leveling up. Um, a per a, a a person that's no longer a person. person. They've died, <laughs> um, but they were alliance in uh -huh. their former life. Uh -huh. Um, and now I've come back from the dead as forsaken, and I'm spying on the horde yep. to prepare for the battle of Azeroth as okay. a rogue. So, so I want a certain guild. So I want to talk about this. Uh, and this has nothing to do with old war anymore. This has to do with a theory <laughs> that I crafted. A couple of years ago, I'm not even sure when I when I actually came up with it, but I I really want this now, now especially with Battle for Azeroth, I really want the devs to hear me on this, um, because I think it's really cool. I think there needs to be a way to become a traitor for your faction and and be a a new like have it so that you can take one tune and go through this immensely long quest, uh, where you are basically. Uh, gaining rep with the opposite faction until you're one of them. Yeah. Just one, That's like awful. one, two. Oh my God, what? that was so great. Then you could play with Night Elves. Then you could play with uh, this. You could play with a uh, gnome. Oh no. A dirty no, no, horde no. gnome. That would be amazing. Oh, no. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be so great. And, and you could be a spy. So yeah, exactly. You could be a spy and uh, you could just, you know, it'd be great. It'd be so awesome. That's an awful idea. Blood elves could play with night elves. Gnomes could play with yeah. goblins. They wouldn't want to. Torin can, you know, do what Torin do. <laughs> <laughs> Graze in a field. Yeah, sure. What's that at? Sure. The sunset. Right. Do the weird head shake thing. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. This could 
this could happen, and, and I think Battle for Azeroth would be an amazing way to to uh, to kick it all off. You know, to be able to do that kind of a quest line where you're a spy and where a filthy horde can become a filthy alliance and the other way around. So, you know, it, I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Pat. No. Yeah. I, no. That would be amazing. I agree. I, I agree. Uh, no. Oh, I would love it. The, the foundation of WoW. It's like, imagine yes. if Luke Skywalker could hang out with. Hey, Luke Skywalker uh, almost hit, almost Kylo went to the Red. dark side now, yeah, didn't he? Like, he almost went to the dark side. I'm, I'm fine. And then with he lost his arm. Switching due to their ideology, ideology. I'm not fine with right. Luke Skywalker putting on a uh, Vader mask and being yeah. like, I'm a cis spy now. Look at me, hey, guys. Like, exactly. No. It's perfect example. The it, Forsaken It's his dad's zone. mask. I mean, yeah, come on. <laughs> well, one of the first quests <laughs> is like, oh, go talk to these new Forsaken. And one of the dudes is like, but I was a human. Right. Oh, well, I guess I'm horde now. Like, that's not yes. how it would be. They still no. have free will. Surely there's some Forsaken out there that are like, what? No, I am not. I'm right. I'm fight against I mean, that, the horde. That's what Panda But I'm going to take advantage of this. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna work my way up the ranks, right? And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna help the alliance. I still Here's think the thing. gonna be amazing. Fist and I don't see eye to eye on most WoW things. So when I know that we're agreeing, I know we're on to something. Oh because yeah. Because we, we, we just don't. Because Gizmo and I usually see eye to eye on WoW things, and spirit. I am yeah. so glad that we can uh, have <laughs> yeah, this two uh, two v two battle. I it, feel like I'm gonna see both you and Gizmo in my raid. Well, Very soon. Yeah, I mean, I'm we're spying on walking. You. We are spying hey, on you. Hey, I have made it no secret that I have started a horde tune. No secret whatsoever. And I'm raiding on that horde tune, which is great. It's You're been a lot of fun. raiding on that tune. So, you know, it's totally, it's totally cool. I'm fine with it. You can play whatever you want, but I just want a way to, uh, to uh, still play a, a night elf uh, yeah. and, and be a filthy horde. Or... Or take my horde tune and uh, move it over to, over to Alliance. Either way, need it for my RP servers. I don't You're feel good about this. The RP God, that would be so players. great. That'd be I so don't great. Feel good right now. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Ulduar is back. <laughs> Yay! Uh, but of course, I, I think we just had an ICC uh, event or a Wrath time walking deal, right? That was like last week or the week before, and so I think the next one is going to be in February. Old War yes. could be back there. So this is for patch 7.3.5, uh, which hasn't even hit the PTR yet. And this is the same one that's going to have the Old World scaling. It's going to have the the new Seething Shore Battleground. It's going to have... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so excited about that. Oh. That's going to be mental. Wow. That is going to be the best. Well, they haven't, had just... a, they haven't had a Battleground in a while, right? No. And this one's crazy. It's going to have like different stuff popping up that you mm -hmm. have to like... It's going to force you to communicate with your team uh, to, to get all these resources popping up in these random places. And Pass. it's basically all roads, you know? <laughs> so it's like, not only is it forcing you to do the thing that you don't want to do, which is communicate, but it's forcing you to do the thing you do want to do, which you shouldn't do, which is fight on the road. So I, I was just... Like the the mesh of this is just, it's delicious. Right. <laughs> well, and and uh, so... Also coming with is, is it with seven three five? I'm trying to remember where they where they said um, voice was coming in Blizzard voice to all the different games. Yeah. Yep. Is that seven three five that is coming in, or is it later? I don't know. Okay. Do you remember Wow <laughs> Voice back in the day? Oh boy, I remember I a lot think of it. Ever worked for me? I remember a lot of yeah, yeah, a lot of static <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, it was back really great. In, uh, Ventrilo was the only option. They need proximity chat. Oh, yeah. that would be that would be weird. Disastrous. Yeah. And Let me tell you, from PUBG, you don't want proximity chat <laughs> in any game ever. You don't want ever. chat in that game. Just turn it off. I have expanded my vocabulary in so many colorful ways <sighs> that I, I did not want to. PUBG it's is so the bad. worst. Let, let, the let me worst. rephrase. If yeah. it was an, in an ideal world, it would be super cool to have proximity chat in World of Warcraft. Holy, I agree. Uh, oh, 
Man. You just have that one gnome following but, you around. <laughs> just, right. Oh, yeah. But it, but they should change your voice if uh, if you're of the opposite faction. So then yeah, they can't understand you. I have those. <laughs> I forget what company made them. Uh, but do you remember those World of Warcraft wireless I do. headsets? They were and so And they have amazing. the built-in voice changer? Yeah. yeah oh. I've, got, oh. I've got a pair of those. Cool. And uh, everybody hated me for using the voice changer. <laughs> but that's what got me here. So, that's funny. You know. That's really funny. <laughs> Oh, Little man. did they know. <laughs> <sighs> All right. We've got we've got a bunch of other stuff coming up for a while. And I just kind of want to breeze through some of this stuff. Um, uh, let's see. The Christie Golden novel is delayed by a month, so it's not coming out until middle of next year. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, let's see. Honor Buddy, the, the bot program, has been shut down by Blizzard. And for that, yes. we say thank you. Because nobody likes a cheater. So now there's no cheating. I'm sure there's probably cheating, but not from not a from this less. one. Yeah, a lot less. What, was, a lot what, less. what did Honor Buddy do? It, like, uh, it played the game for you, essentially. Yeah, it was. Uh, so, like, oh, it was like a little younger brother. Yeah. yeah farming. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Got it. Yeah. That's the, so. the economy is going to change a lot now that this isn't around, though. So it's going to be really interesting to, interesting to see what goes on. But. Mm-hmm. It's good because this was just like completely ruining the experience for some people. Right. Um, but yeah, I know. I don't uh, like those guys. Let's see. Uh, world PvP changes uh, came uh, during the reset today. Uh, Fist, what were the PvP changes? So Do for non tanks, uh, you gain 40% less damage from enemy players. And eight trinkets, trinkets and legendaries have had their PvP effect- effectiveness reduced. And the intent was to reduce the amount of initial burst damage dealt by. Uh, PvPers in the world, giving the victim a chance to react. They want to maintain the anything goes nature of world PvP, but they want to give a chance to retaliate. So, I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. That works for me. Um, I'm excited about that. And uh, well, that's and so I think I think this is kind of like the precursor to uh, the server changes that are going to be happening yes. later, where where we see PvP servers go away and PVE servers yeah. go away, and it's just a toggle at some yeah. point. Yeah. So. Definitely gonna have to figure out how to make toggling on PvP more appealing, not just with rewards yeah. and stuff, but like right. you know, being a little more lenient to people who aren't necessarily legendary gods like I am in World right. PvP. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, uh, th- this is cool though, because the the thing that sucked in World PvP, like it's hard enough if you're doing arenas and going against a rogue and getting stun locked, even when you have a healer. Rogues. Um. So like in World, when you're by yourself, a rogue or you know. Uh, druid comes up on you you're just dead and there's nothing yeah. you can do so having the time to react kind of keep unless you on your that toes druid still, is, is cool. me by the way if, <laughs> if i approach you as a kitty i might stun you initially but i'm not going to kill you probably you so. did really well in all those bgs we did last night i did oh i didn't die as much because i wasn't <laughs> because i wasn't playing resto i learned my lesson <laughs> i learned my lesson on that one so that was that was nice um also hey this week uh, there is going to be something happening. Uh, I know what it is. Ah, what is it? Actually, you knew before I did. Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? Um, there's a Q&A with Ian Hezekostas this Thursday, November 16th uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, no, sorry, it's 8 a.m. It says p.m. on wow. the blue post, but that's not true. It's 8 a.m. CST. And you can ask questions. It's interesting because the hashtag used to be Legion QA, but now it's WoW QA, which, you know, you know might be answering some Legion questions, might be answering some other questions. Who knows? Right. Um, and remember, your questions should be 40 words or less if you want them to be considered. So be concise. Right. All that is very, very good advice. Uh, and I know that we have some other stuff as well. Uh that we're going to be talking about later. I'm just going to push it off because we have to get to the other games. We absolutely have to do this. Uh, and we will start with, uh, let's see. Um, which one do I want to do? Let's do Overwatch. You won't get rid of me that easily. Because John Grant's in there now. So, John. Hey. Hi. Hi. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Good. Awesome. Uh, what's ha- what's happening with Overwatch since BlizzCon? I mean, we we saw this fantastic cinematic. We and uh, there's something new with that, right? Yeah. So we we saw the amazing cinematic, which yeah. was young Reinhardt, kind of how he came to awesome. be, how he 
kind of that 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 watershed moment into his maturity and into kind of you know like like his resolve as a hero and kind of what really defines him as that and it was amazing uh i cried yep. i would say to this day first or second favorite overwatch short uh it was it really was, good it was pretty good by the uh, way i was crying during the entire opening ceremony it didn't really <laughs> matter was, yeah there was did, a lot i, I like, didn't cry during the the uh, hots one no, no, not it so much. Felt a little bit like the so uh, the battle for Dale for me, honestly. You know what I'm saying? A little little uh, Bard versus Smaug. 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 Oh, yeah. Smaug. Oh, my God, it's it. Smaug. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Smaug. I just like saying it. Smaug. It's fun to say. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but besides that, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and so now there's yeah. so now there's a director's commentary. Right. Yep, we've got uh, director's commentary, and uh, it was it was really good. I want to watch it a few more times before I like totally like go. Oh, this is what I really enjoyed about it. But you it, it, you need to watch it definitely oh, yeah. once oh, you yeah. watched it that way. For watch sure. it, and uh, that also puts Overwatch shorts over an hour. So oh, if wow. you take just the it, Pixar animated style Overwatch shorts play them back to back to back to back and, back for over an hour now. And like I know six minutes. And I know that there's so there's I think I think it's the rumor mill that's spinning and, and they just were talking about, oh, wouldn't it be great great for an Overwatch movie? And I know I have something in the notes. I don't necessarily want to talk about this though. Because it's just like the rumor mill is just going about let's do an Overwatch movie. I'm like, no, let's do an Overwatch TV show. Let's do Let's do the Soldier Seventy Six uh, as the parent of the of the Overwatch babies, and let's do it that way, and have the cute little chibi, uh, you know, guys just kind of causing a ruckus. What's with you and things being babies? I don't know. I just oh think God. it'd be awesome. Gizmo would be so cute if he was a baby. It's like Pat, you got to stop saying that about people. Well, it's weird. He would be. He would I be, mean, yeah, he would be I great. Don't, I don't. I'm would not be, arguing with you. It would be I just, great. It would be great. It's a weird thing. So. But, but, there, but there's, I mean, it's, Go ahead. I, I think the thing that's the most clear is that people crave overwatch multimedia content, oh. whether it's shorts, uh, comic books, yeah. uh, cin- the, the kind of the teaser type cinematic things. Right. I personally almost more than the like Pixar style 3d cinematic, I would rather have a TV show in the style that they did the Doom Fist. Yeah. Um, oh, it's yeah, like yeah. kind of yeah, anime was, Saturday right. morning cartoon oh, thing. So that was good. so yeah. good. So I would good. Like, give, me, give me that. Yeah. Give me that. I would love that. I think it's obvious that uh, Blizzard is going to capitalize on long form video content for overwatch. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I'm not convinced how yet. I don't know if it'll be like, imagine blizzard and Netflix teaming up for, uh, you know, awesome. some, some sort of 10, 10 episode season thing. Like there's so many things that I think could happen. I'm not convinced right. that we're going to see an overwatch movie for, for quite a few years. No. Yeah. No. Blizzard puts their games first, you know, like they're gonna they're gonna keep releasing these shorts for a long time. And it took, wow, ten years. Exactly. Like they're there. gonna and, concentrate and that's just, on the gameplay. Wow. What? Warcraft. I mean, what is almost a twenty year franchise? Like yeah, yeah. It's right. uh, it's, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's. I would I would love it though. I would I would love to see a little something extra. That would be that would be too. amazing. But uh, yeah, totally get it. Um, by the way, so I was on the PTR. Uh the last couple of days and Moira is on the PTR, the new, uh, the new hero. Yes. And, yeah. uh, Thist, I know you were on the PTR as well. Oh yeah. And I think she's pretty cool. Oh, I don't I don't know how effective she is, but she does seem to be, uh, as, as Jeff Kaplan said, O P A F. Oh, well, they all are. <laughs> at the spell beginning, Moira. Right? That's yeah. how you spell it. Yeah. So, uh, John, what was your take on Moira? Oh man, this is this is a really exciting time. So we saw Moira, the new hero, announced. She's a support hero, and she's kind of got a Zenyatta slash Symmetra thing going on, where she's got 
uh, two sides. She can heal people. She can deal damage. She can toss an orb that either heals people within a radius and bounces off the walls or it does damage and bounces off the walls. And she's got like this Pretty insane. Cool. Imagine having the Hanzo ultimate, but you can just kind of like aim it where you want. <laughs> like she's got that thing going on. She's pretty insane. Yeah. And on paper, her kit looks amazing. And by far, I would say the most compelling of any new Overwatch hero we've seen. It took Ana five months before she got uh, before she got regular play. It took Sombra almost a year. Orisa doesn't even really get played at all there. Doomfist, same thing. We saw him for a short brief time in Korea and then for the most part doesn't get played. We actually had the Hulktastic Cup. So one of the I would say like one of the fathers of competitive Overwatch was a guy named Internet Hulk. He yeah. played with uh, Team Envious. So sad. And was there Lucio there and he actually passed away. We don't have a whole lot of details. Yeah. yeah. He's 30 but, years man, old. Man, it hit like the the community really hard. Hit me really hard. He was one of my favorite people uh in the early competitive overwatch scene he went on to be a coach for team liquid and he was so good at it that he ended up bringing them into their lcs squad to coach them there like that's just long story short we had the hulktastic cup which was a just a little tournament to kind of honor internet hulk and uh help with uh funeral uh preparations and things like that and then everything else uh, was going to go to charity of the family's choice. And we actually saw a ton of Moira get played during that time. And she is like, right now in her current form, she's competitive today. She's she's real and, deal, man. She's real deal. I, I really liked playing her. And it was really cool. I mean, it's super intuitive as far as uh, how you play her uh, because the left side heals and the right right side hurts. So let's just do this thing. Although the the spraying of stuff out of her hands is a little weird. <laughs> it just looks a little weird when you're healing people and you're running around and it's like you're spraying yellow dust out of your left hand. A little strange. As you do. Right. Yeah, right. but this is also the same uh, scientist that made uh, Reaper, Gabriel Reyes, the way that he I'm, is. Right? I'm and not if he can, like, disperse, she can, like, shoot things from her hands sure That's i'm not okay. saying that it can't happen i'm just saying it looks a little weird that's all i'm saying just looks a little weird it's just yeah it's <laughs> i mean oh okay i'll give you that it's yeah. a little like uh what's what's the wicked witch in sleeping beauty's name maleficent? <laughs> witch of the west yeah maleficent, maleficent like it's a little yeah. maleficenty yeah. yeah yeah but you know besides that I think her her skins are pretty cool too. Oh, yeah. um, so cool! The skins that we saw, the David Bowie inspired oh, one, looks really yeah, cool. Yeah, so it's cool. really great. Um, but I'm not quite as excited about that as I am about the new map that we got, oh. which is Bliss World. Yes. Oh, so oh. I, dude, how many people want this in real life? I mean, come on, this is just the thing Me? that you want, right? I want this for sure. Oh, I want it yep. so much. So cool. It's really good. I didn't actually get to play it at BlizzCon. I was just so busy, so I'm I'm really kind of upset. But they did so many. Like, I mean, imagine you know, Blizzard is so well known for like the cute little details that they put in. Now imagine them making an entire map around those cute little details, where they're like, "Go nuts." With your cute little details, I love it. Snacks, Ramus. Well, and and it gives them a great in to provide all of the different uh, World of Warcraft skins and all the different, I mean, like all of the different skins from all of the different games, bring them in yeah. and make sure that that uh, Widowmaker can be, uh, what's her name? Uh, Nova. Nova. Yeah, Nova. That's, and other stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah, I want, when Hogger eventually makes his way into Heroes of the Storm, oh. I want, well, and not even necessarily Hogger, you could do this with a ton of heroes, have a skin in Heroes where it's a person in like a, just one of those, you know, <gasps> entertainment suits. Yeah. Like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It'd be a awesome. little animatronic oh, thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I bet great. 
I can't imagine. I, I'm so jealous of the people that actually got to work on and create Buzzworld. That has to be like one of the coolest projects to be able to yes. work on. Right. Absolutely. But so. but I, I really do think that it's because people wanted Overwatch characters to, to have a skin of one of their other favorite characters in another Blizzard game. Mm-hmm. That is the reason why they're doing this. Or at least that, well, that was the thing that probably started it. It was also something Chris Metzen said at 2015 BlizzCon. He mentioned something about a Blizzard amusement park, mm-hmm. and he shouldn't have. And apparently <laughs> the the Overwatch team has been thinking about that this whole time. And they're like, okay, let's just make it a map. Let's a really, really cool map. And now well, it's a really cool Overwatch, map. It's awesome. Overwatch has already shown, too, that they're willing to uh, insert some whimsy into their you know, game at the expense of like this super serious, dire, you know, lore thing. I think uh, look at uh, Hollywood is a great example of that. You've got like the whole Westworld thing going on and uh, Hellfred glitch bot. Yep. You know, you're you're escorting his limo as heroes of the world and Overwatch and fighting back and forth. You know, it's very... Overwatch is really cool because you can definitely do the, you know, the famous Chris Metzen, you know, suspend your disbelief for a moment and just take it for what it is. And um, I, I think this is kind of the ultimate manifestation of that where they're just like, let's just go nuts and have fun. And people are like, there's not an amusement park in 2070 where – you know, the world and Omnics are taking over, and they're like, yeah, they're in. Uh-oh, did we lose John? We kind of oh, no. lost John. Oh, no, you're back. Uh, you're back. Am I here? You, you here? totally okay. glitched out, though. It's totally fine. Weird. It's totally uh, fine. I, elf, I Halfred glitch bot it out. Right. Um, and Boo. then the... <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Boo. Um, I had another point now, but I got booed by Pat and totally forgot what it was. Uh, That's right. That's right. No, it's, but it is cool. And I really do like Blizzard, Blizzard and, and I, I so want this to be in Mall of America somewhere. I think that would be a great place for it. Camp Snoopy becomes Blizzard. It's no longer Camp Snoopy anymore. It's 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 like Nickelodeon something or Camp Snoopy. Yeah, it's Nickelodeon universe. I get it. It was the park at MOA in between. I I get it, Pat, but no, it's good. Any Minnesotan who doesn't call it Camp Snoopy isn't a Minnesotan. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, it is what it is. Don't ask. It's Mall of America. I don't know. I I just want Blizzworld there, and then it can just be Blizzworld. How about that? Uh let's move on. To, I actually want to move on to uh, Heroes of the Storm for a second, uh, and I will play this. Yeah, baby. There we go. Uh, so, Gizmo. Hi. First hey. of all. Uh, <laughs> so, we saw a couple of new heroes be announced for, for Heroes of the Sto- Storm, Hanzo and Alex Straza, and uh, we have some movement going on with those, right? Yes, What's so uh, Alex Straza has gone live today, along with uh, the new rank battleground rotation. Let's, and I want to do the I want to do the applause. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, we have a we have an actual dwagon, right? Dwegan that you right. can play in game now, and, and you, it it feels incredible. You know why they did Alex Straza first? Because Hanzo still has a long way to go. Yes, as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it, well, and it's not. Um, it, we've talked to some people that says he's still in the development process. Now, yeah. you know, he's due in three weeks, two weeks on PTR, but we'll kind of see. Um, but he does feel a little bit rough. Yeah. But Alex Straza feels incredible. And it's actually kind of weird. I think she's in a really good spot at launch. It'll be cool to see what happens whenever the HGC starts back up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm pretty confident in my ability to pick up new heroes and come up with, you know, high-end builds when they first come out which i've done this time but man there's something about her i just haven't picked up yet on her healing my healing numbers compared to everyone else are absolute garbage um so she has a little bit of a well, workup period to get used to her but she is just super maybe, fun to play maybe maybe that's just because you're a bad player i mean that's, that's oh. also very no funny. i'm kidding i'm totally kidding it's also Ouch. <laughs> uh, it's been a while you know uh, uh, making fun of you guys face to face is so much better 
Because then you can, because then you can just turn around and hit me when I'm being dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you're right. I just I posted on Twitter earlier today that I I am officially I gave up my aspirations to become a professional uh, gamer, esport e- athlete, Aww. which was never actually a thing. I knew I was never good enough. But <laughs> uh, thanks for all the support, everyone. I appreciate right. it. You're my but, MVP, guys. <laughs> right. I didn't. I didn't have. I haven't even got an MVP today. Um, but Lily, there's also. You. <laughs> Lily, a big Lily rework. Some really okay. interesting things. So on uh what's her trait fast feet, they added a functionality to where her basic ability cooldown uh cooldowns recharge 50% faster while that trait's active. So pretty much when she's taking damage to compensate, they increased some of the um cooldowns on her basic abilities. Mm-hmm. But the there's a ton of stuff in this trait, but one of the big things here is what they did to Jug of a Thousand Cups, which is one of her ultimates. Mm -hmm. They made it to, uh, they uh, reduced the cooldown from 70 to 20 seconds, uh, but they now made it where you can cancel it early. So the way the cooldown is going to work, each time an ally is healed by that ability, its cooldown is increased by two seconds up to a maximum of 50. So you can still use the whole thing and it go back up to the 70 second cooldown it used to be. Or you can just do short bursts and then have a, cool, a lower cooldown for needing to, you know, use it for the next wow. team fight. That's kind of so, that's kind of neat. That's it kinda, is. It's weird. It's kind of neat. It's kind of it neat. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a lot more Lily play, is what you're saying? Is that the hope? I, I've been I've been seeing her a lot today, okay. and you know what? You know, hashtag Lily a riot. I love Lily. She was my first character that I played like heavily in the game mm-hmm. as I was learning a MOBA, and that's she's just me. cute. Still has a creepy face, but. Uh, what can you do what yeah. can you do not look yeah. directly at it i remember when yeah. they, so i remember when they uh first came out with the uh pandaren children right if for, for miss pandaria <laughs> and it was like they hadn't sped up the the voice stuff yet so it was just this man and woman <laughs> doing like normal voices and it just was so creepy so creepy yeah. and then they sped him up and it was fine but when it was when it was regular speed it was like Oh my God! What are these people doing? What is what is World of Warcraft becoming <laughs> with these creepy, creepy kids, and or these creepy, creepy people trying to be kids? And I was like, Oh, I don't get it. <sighs> Thankfully, stuff you put happened. too much thought into that. It's almost oh yeah, no. Creepy. As a as an audio guy, I I put way too much thought into it. I I heard it and I played it over and over again, and I totally skeeved myself out. I mean, like like I was just. <laughs> So weirded out the entire time. All right, go uh, ahead. I'm sorry, Gizmo. <laughs> it's, it's almost as creepy as Pikachu speaking English in the new Pokemon movie, which I won't go uh, into. What it's is weird. That? Uh, I'm what is not that? ready to talk uh, about that. that. It is no. What is that? No. What is that? No. Show's no, over, it. everybody. Just, Show's just over. Just no, I'm just kidding. I don't like it's a teaser. It's not. All right. It's, you shouldn't. It's really weird. Let's um, let's not talk about that anymore. No, we're not. Let's Never. talk. Let's talk instead about this performance based matchmaking stuff that they announced at BlizzCon, and we have. Do we have some more uh, stuff on that now as well? Yeah. So uh, Travis uh, McGeethy, who is uh, one of the leads for Heroes of the Storm, went to Reddit uh, to clear some things up because they announced this at BlizzCon and the way they kind of described it at first was, you know, it's just it's going to be based off of your personal performance, but that's going to vary from hero to hero. And the example they used was Illidan. It's going to kind of calculate the damage you dealt. Uh, plus camps taken and amount of deaths. And then for Kerrigan, you know, it may weigh less on damage dealt, but more on CC. How well were you landing your combos? So people were really worried that, oh, so there's going to be these specific things that people are going to be going into game just to try and max those stats out to Mm -hmm. try and get the best performance-based MMR. So he went in to clear things up. First and foremost, MMR is still going to most heavily be weighed by wins and losses. The thing that the performance-based MMR is going to do is just kind of make up. um, Say you lose, but you played really well. It's going to make it feel less bad. You're not going to drop as much. So you won and you played really well. Now you just get a really big boost. Um, And the way that it's actually going to work, they're not telling uh, the system what stats should be high or higher for each hero. It's going to learn itself and say I'm playing wow. Kerrigan at gold MMR. It's mm-hmm. going to compare my stats based off of all the other Kerrigans at that MMR. 
to tell if well, I'm playing cool. Kerrigan well or not. Yeah, so it's a self-running system. Actually. Um, neat. Which that. is, yeah, there's hmm. no ways to, you know, cheese that. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited for this uh, system to come out. It's going to be really cool. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention here is with the Alex Straza patch, um, they did make a change to the store that a lot of people aren't necessarily super happy about. A lot of people don't care as well. Uh, when heroes launch from now on, starting with Alex Straza, uh -huh. their launch skins are going to be available in a bundle, which they typically have been for like two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and then you can craft those skins in the store with shards still. Oh, and then he then he glitched out. Oh, it's the it's the glitch out. Go ahead. Sorry, oh. back it up just a, a uh, couple of seconds, and then go ahead. Uh, so <laughs> launch skins for yeah. heroes, yeah. you could, uh, they were on sale after the two weeks, you could then craft those skins from mm -hmm. now on the launch skins are only going to be purchasable with gems, but that bundle is going to be on the store permanently. Okay. Um, All right. All which right. is a little weird, but cool. Kind of, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird, but a cool. hot topic. Gotcha. Hot topic. Gotcha. Topic. And Skype is being weird, speaking of which. But that's Skype. That's the way it goes. Good old Skype. The podcaster's one true love. Oh, and yeah. and one true enemy. Um, yep. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Hearthstone. Well met. There we go. And uh, John. Yeah. <laughs> who now has a blue tongue because he ate blue Pez. <laughs> I, 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 well, there was, I ate Pez Now I'm like that weird kid in third grade Who either always has a booger In his nose or his mouth is a different color That's alright I had and, My yeah. entire BlizzCon experience My tongue was a different color than it normally is Because I was eating Jolly Ranchers So don't worry about it at yeah. all It totally I had all right. a teacher in middle school Who back on the projectors Would always clean the projector with her finger fingers like lick her hands and put the markers yeah. in her mouth and her mouth her mouth was always like red and blue and nasty yeah. by the end of class. Look, look at how blue that is though deep alliance fist blue right yeah, right just keep it in your right, mouth right buddy there. uh so Dang. let's talk a little bit about co kobolds and catacombs the uh the new expansion from hearthstone uh and yeah. we actually have a release date now right i i think so december 7th right i think so I think that's. I, I, I know they said I December. So I know they said December. Yeah. Did they say December seventh? Is that what it is? I mean, yeah. I I think so. I don't know if it's. Oh, been it's presumed. Like, presumed. Sorry. Yeah. I I think, but it's pretty obvious that, um, like, I'm, I'm based on how Hearthstone has released their expansions, they've been really punctual, and just the fact that they don't announce something like that and. It be a month and a half before it's yeah it's pretty pretty much confirmed December seventh. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll we'll just go with that. All right, cool. The cool thing about kobolds and catacombs, yeah. we're getting 135 new cards. So and we've seen uh, a few of those, right? We have uh, okay. one of the new mechanics is recruit. Yeah, which recruits. Uh, a, a card to the play field, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. We also saw legendary weapons. Each class will have a legendary weapon, which oh, yeah, is that's, that's pretty neat. The last cool thing that yeah. we got was the dungeon runs, where uh, they basically said you have 1.4 cobillion, which is not a number at all, but you have an insane amount of different chances to play against these AI bosses. Nope. Damn it. Am I gone again? Am I here? Yeah. Am I you back? know what? Am I you gone? know what? You know what? Um, we may have to wrap this up. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on, but my computer is, um, totally messing up. That's not good. Like I hear like, I like the computer sounds and stuff like that are playing in my ear telling me that, yeah. telling me that, um, like the the different uh, thing, like all the different audio things are kind of turning on and off, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty great. It's saying, "Hey, you're having way too much fun podcasting. And right. We just can't allow that." Right. And so this Zoom, is Zoom. Should this we uh, really sign up awesome. for Zoom? 
for next week. Yeah, maybe. Well, <laughs> actually, I don't think that that'll, that'll even help. Help. I think it's my computer. Like my computer needs to get like totally defragged uh, or something. I don't know exactly what's going on. <sighs> All right. Um. Well, it seems to have stabilized a little bit. I don't understand it myself. Let's just end it really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just end it really quickly. Um, they so, created a cool dungeon mode that's going to be a lot of fun for you players who <laughs> don't want to spend a lot of time playing against other people. Yes. And because I'm having computer problems, I'm just going to briefly say this. Uh, Diablo Season 12 now live. We have StarCraft is now free to play. Yay. On that one. I will say, did yay you see their one. jab at Star Wars Battlefront yes. today? Uh, so good. What, what was it? Now you got to explain it. Explain it. So with Star Wars Battlefront, you know, yeah. the big thing is the microtransactions are insane. Yeah. And they basically put out a series of tweets that's like, number of hours you need to grind out to get all the heroes, zero. Right. Number of dollars you need to spend for the base game, zero. <laughs> and it was just... Right. Well, and they also, pretty, did, they also did that uh, on the video to a certain extent. They did that with the video that they now have on the launcher for StarCraft 2 as well. Because they were talking about it's like this father son moment where the dad is talking about how their family doesn't pay for, they don't pay to win in their, <laughs> you know, essentially. <laughs> um, so, so that's the exact opposite conversation I got with my dad, by the way. <laughs> right. We're pay to win. Buddy. We are pay to win. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's do a real quick, and, and I know that we just had all of this stuff happen with, with, um, all the different esports for uh, all of the different games, right? And yes. so I'm going to play. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't really matter. How about this one? Blizzard games? That's so old school. Oh. Right. And so for all of the different esports, we had all the different things happen. We have Overwatch League coming up, right? Yes. What's coming up with so Overwatch close. League? So we've got the preseason coming up December 6th, I believe. Awesome. Um, and it's going to be uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. And it's going to be it's going to be awesome. The hype is through the roof. We've got all the rosters announced. We've got all the Overwatch League, uh, um like uh, new franchises announced. We've got all the Overwatch League merch announced. That goes on sale December, the first day of the December preseason. 6th. Yeah, so, and I'm so, I'm yeah, waiting for that. I actually I actually tweeted to the uh, Miami Mayhem because uh, I'm a big junk junk rat fan, uh, and I was like, so when are we going to see the merch? And they and they said December sixth, and I'm like, awesome. I cannot nice. wait. Nice. That's going to be so great. So. It's going to be awesome, um, especially this week. We don't have a whole lot of time, but stay tuned on my Twitter if you're yes. looking for more Overwatch League specific content that yes. uh, may be coming to a feed near you very soon. Who knows? Uh, we also had the TESPA Collegiate Dungeon Race uh, this last weekend. Uh, and th so this is kind of like the Mythic Dungeon Invitational. Kind of. Kind of, except for okay. it's college teams. Right. Yeah. So, uh, UC Irvine once again uh, it shows their strength at playing video games, but they're in Irvine. How could they not be good at Blizzard games? They're in Irvine. <laughs> they have to be. Right. It's in the water. Yeah. 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 So, uh, those guys got first place, and they get two thousand dollars per player, which is awesome. Um, it's not a huge thing, but uh, but whatever. Well, it's for scholarships. So, I mean, right. If I was playing WoW for money in college. I probably wouldn't have been in debt for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. But you know, this you and I were talking about this earlier um today and it was like, you know, I just didn't see any any social media about this or much anyway. Not much. Um it was a little disappointing. Yeah. I just uh, I, I just, just want them to boost the signal a little bit. Yeah, know? like I just I just I want people to be in my face about World of Warcraft esports, please. Yeah. Please be obnoxious about it, Blizz. Put it right. in my face. Wow. Uh but I <laughs> but I I do like the dungeon race idea and I want to see it grow and I and I, I definitely uh appreciate that more than I do WoW PvP just because of the way that I play. Um mm -hmm. but uh so I, I wanna see this 
build into something cool. I really hope so. I really hope the MDI comes back at least too. Yeah. Right. Do we have any word on that? No. No, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Uh, and then we have some HGC stuff too, right? Uh, yes. Well? Yeah. Yes. So MVP Black won BlizzCon, and now we're on our break, and Roster Apocalypse is happening. <laughs> um, the kind of big things here, uh, Michael Udall retired from Gale Force. That was a few weeks right. ago. Right. Um, but Bakery announced, it was either yesterday or today, that he... Uh, the team captain for Team Dignitas for the last two years is stepping down. He is leaving. Wow. Um, he said he made sure, made it very clear he is not leaving the scene. Um, there's a lot of things that he wants to do. He wants to, you know, he wants to cast. He wants to be a coach. He wants to be a manager. He wants to start his own esports organization. And right. so he's just taking some time to explore those. Uh, he may be back. He's just said for phase one, he will not be competing. Uh, but there's been a lot of roster flip-flops happening. Um, Glarung was released from Roll20 being replaced by Cure, uh, mm-hmm. who was on Team Freedom. So we'll kind of, we have, I think, like two, two and a half months until HGC starts back up. Um, but the acquisition of new members and roster should be locked down by, I think, the end of this month, like November 22nd or 23rd, okay. something like that. Okay. So. Cool. Cool. And mm-hmm. by the way, guys, uh, for the, for those guys that want more information about uh, like all of the different stuff that happened during BlizzCon and since then, uh, I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to at least uh, try to hopefully get people some more information on game specific stuff in like special reports or special, you know, like one off shows in this feed to kind of help um take care of some of that stuff it's it's difficult in a group setting to to be able to to go through all the things and say you know so we just kind of talk about the big things here but i want to talk about yeah. more specific things with maybe you guys individually that we can nice. put up on the stream you uh, don't and- think we can handle the big things individually pat wow uh so <laughs> just skate right over that it'll be fun <laughs> it'll be totally cool uh, so, guys, what do you have coming up? What have you What have you been up to since BlizzCon? How can people find you? All that kind of good stuff. I'm gonna start with John. Uh, what's What's going on with you? I mean, other than the Overwatch coming soon TM thing. Yeah, find me everywhere at Kick Tripod, Twitch.tv slash Kick Tripod, uh, and Twitter.com slash Kick Tripod, and we do Well Met Monday nights, 7 p.m. Pacific time, Twitch.tv slash BlizzPro, or go to wellmet.blizzpro.com. There we go, Gizmo. How about you, buddy? You can find me all over the interwebs at Gizmozord, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, all those things, as well as my Heroes of the Storm podcast, Lords of the Storm, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Central. Mm-hmm. TBK and I are two manning it so, for a while. Multi Zord oh, had yeah. a baby Zord. Yeah, he had a baby Zord. So congrats to him. That's so cute. A little Ooh. baby Zord. A little baby Zord. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, and Fist. Hi. Hi. What do you what do you All got right. going on? How can people find oh. you and stuff? Um, you, you can find me at this 3 on Twitter. Um, you can find my podcast at laggingballs.com. Uh, I spectacularly lost a competition uh, this week where I was supposed to uh, predict things for BlizzCon, yeah. and uh, I lost. I yeah. got eight points. The highest points was like 100 plus. Right. So the penalty. Let- <laughs> is uh, that the next episode of Lagging Balls is going to be completely clean. Right. Uh, family something, friendly. Something you're not used to. Right. Over there. Uh, right. If, if, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, so, for, and if, you really want, if you really want more about her humiliating loss, just go over to Azeroth Roundtable, uh, yeah. pick up that last show, and they kind of recap <laughs> all of the, all of the uh, wonderful predictions that everybody else made. Yeah, everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> So. You had a couple All in right. there. You had a couple in there. You you finished at least you were above zero, right? So yeah. thanks, Pat. I feel so, so much you got better. That, you got that going. Almost for, just, in the double digits. I am oh. just trying to uh, find a silver lining. That's that's what I do. All right, guys. Uh, and oh, by the way, if you want to find me, I'm at Pat Crane on Twitter, uh, and Crane is with a K. 
Just so you know. All right, I'm going to bail on that. <laughs> and then I'm going to play this. And you guys can join in on the conversation anytime, of course. You can always email us, convertrate at gmail.com. You can call and leave comments and questions on our raid line, 612-787-RAID. That's 612-787-7243. You can jo join the Bazooba Guabo Nation by heading over to convertrade.com. That's where we have show downloads, Discord infos, videos, audios, and guild stuffs. Uh, and it's all over at convertrade.com. We're also on YouTube. And I, well, I, not iTunes. It's Apple Podcasts now. But that's where you can go subscribe to stuff. There you go. Uh, Convert to Rate is produced and distributed by Signals Media. Make sure to check out all of our friends on the Signals Media All-Star Network at SignalsMedia.com. Uh, that's going to do it for the show. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to uh, ba back to the show. Yeah. It was fun having you here. I But I wish that, you know, we could all be together. I want all of Pat, not just two inch Pat. <sighs> <laughs> I phrased it better oh that time. Oh boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> not really. <laughs> not really. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, you got to be here for the pre show, folks. All right. That's going to do it for the show. For all the guys on Cover Trade, uh, we hope you had a good time and we'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. <laughs> Goofball. <laughs> oh, man.